Hello from ITU in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined by Audrius Perkauskas, uh, who works on audiovisual and media policy at the European Commission. Audrius, thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. We are uh, at a uh, workshop on the future of TV for Europe. Of course, the media landscape has changed very considerably. How do regulators deal with these changes? What is, what is the work that uh, you've been discussing today from uh, the European Commission? So, uh, at the Commission we try to keep a close eye on the way TV landscape is developing and uh, so the instrument we are char in charge of, which is Audiovisual Media Services Directive, is evolving uh, constantly too. So, uh, uh, we c just completed the latest revision of, uh, of a directive and this revision was uh, provoked by fundamental changes in the media market and uh, in particular the fact that first of all on-demand services gained uh, prominence and uh, they are more and more watched by users especially young people and also uh, video uh, sharing platforms emerge so in other words uh, we have major major gateways to uh, audiovisual content where you would find uh, n not the content produced professionally but content produced by users and uh, and uh, distributed to you by these platforms so this was the reason for this rec recent reform how does it accommodate the um, new forms of media consumption also in relation to consumer protection Yes, so um, one thing to underline is that uh, since uh, these new players, they have a particular role, they do not necessarily produce content themselves, but often they take content created by a user, uh, so we don't have editorial responsibility for the content. So we thought, uh, what would be the most important uh, values that we need to protect and how we should uh, ensure those protections? So first of all, when it comes to the values to be protected. Uh, so the Commission uh, fought and uh, the Council and the Parliament in the European Union agreed that protection of children is one of uh, such core values. And then secondly, il protection from illegal content and harmful content is equally uh, very important. And, and finally also uh, we, uh, we thought it's important to continue our tradition of uh, regulating uh, commercial uh, communications or in other words advertising. Now coming to the instruments, how we uh, ensure that those values uh, continue to be protected in this uh, different world. Uh, so it's, uh, it's through, through several means. So it's by making sure that platforms give users possibility to flag if they see problematic content. It's by making sure that uh, users can signal to platform that certain content uh, is an inappropriate, in other words. It's also by uh, enabling users to complain to the platform itself that something is going wrong. And it's also to make to by making sure that then users can complain to state authorities if things are not settled. Another topic that we, ITU and the European Commission both work on is uh, the accessibility of AV media to uh, people with disabilities. Um, how have you addressed that in, the new, uh, in your new framework, in your new directive? Ah, it's an excellent question because uh, uh, right now in this uh, AT workshop on the future of television, I uh, just realized how important the topic is. Well, I knew that it is important, but uh, numerically, it turns out that uh, in Europe, around 60% of all people need some kind of help with uh, consumption of media content. It's I think this is, uh, this is huge, and it's only likely to increase with uh, population gel getting older. Mm. Uh, so uh, in, the EU in the European Union, again, in the revised audiovisual media services directive, we put a, um, a strong emphasis uh, on accessibility compared to the previous text, and. Uh, the obligation on member states and providers is to progress, to make a tangible progress uh, towards uh, making accessibility a reality in Europe. So, uh, in other words, at the European level, at the level of regulation, we state the objective and we ident identify some means uh, how uh, the objective should be achieved. 
So we encourage, uh, for example, media service providers uh, to put in place uh, so-called accessibility plans in which we would explain how exactly we will go about uh, this task. And then, of course, there would be uh, periodic reporting, so from the provider to the member state and then from member state to the European Commission. And what I found uh, is uh, that here in IT also lots of detailed work is uh, going on on accessibility issues. So. Uh, people from uh, from different uh, industry groups, they get together they and they think hard what kind of technologies could help uh, accessibility to, to become reality and how they could be deployed on internet and broadcasting and so on. So these things are very complementary uh, policy and regulatory work and actual uh, technical work in ITU. Excellent. Andreas, thank you very much. Thank you.